Monsieur le ministre Alami, haut commissaire du plan du Royaume du Maroc, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers amis. Permettez-moi d'abord de féliciter le Haut Commissariat au Plan et le BEPA pour cette importante initiative qui donne suite à la conférence sur l'espace géopolitique atlantique qui a été organisée par la Commission européenne l'année passée et aussi à la conférence SKIRAT de 2009. Je voudrais aussi louer le Maroc et ses institutions pour leur détermination et attachement au renforcement de la coopération transatlantique. The world is going through major geopolitical transformations. A progressive rebalancing of power amongst different continents is taking place. Most of the world's attention has turned to the East. But let me add that to focus only on one single region would be a mistake. Globalization is also changing the Atlantic area for the better. The rise of Latin America and Africa is creating a new dynamic between North and South Atlantic. The 21st century will also be, I believe, an Atlantic century. The so-called New Atlanticism is a topic that I follow with great interest. The European Union has developed very strong relations with the Atlantic world, both with Northern Atlantic countries such as the United States, Canada and Mexico, but also with the Southern Atlantic countries in South America and in Africa. Our economic interdependence has also been growing intensively and quickly during the last decade or so. The Atlantic economy represents about two-thirds of the world GDP and the region leads in terms of international trade volume and foreign investment. Today, the European Union is the biggest economic and trade partner of North America, of South America and of Africa. The societies of the Atlantic Rim also share deep cultural and political values. The great majority of the Atlantic political communities are governed by democratic governments, which respect fundamental human rights, rule of law, open societies and market economies. Besides common opportunities and the huge potential for growth, the Atlantic continents also face common challenges. Among others, I could refer to challenges such as energy security and also the problems that result from climate change, New security threats, such as terror networks, organized crime, drug trafficking, illegal migrations, food security and the preservation of natural resources, and the need to keep safe maritime routes for our economy and trade relations. And even if the main Atlantic countries have sometimes competing interests or different strategies, these divergences should be seen as normal element in politics, which indeed do not question the strong political, economic and the value ties that unite most of us. As we enter the West-East divide, it is also time to overcome division between North and South. And Atlantic space is in a privileged position to contribute to that. We should all collectively recognize that divisions of the 20th century do not serve a 21st century global order. This is why we should take in our hands the construction of a true Atlantic community for the world of the 21st century. A community based on an equal partnership between South and North, East and West of our Atlantic space. This initiative today is also, in my view, an important contribution to that end. By bringing together an impressive collection of participants, former political leaders, academics and think tanks, business and NGO people, diplomats and civil servants, this is, I believe, the right mixture to create and develop what I might term Atlantic networks involving civil society and public institutions. And these networks must play a leading role in further developing new forms of cooperation among the political, economic and social actors of the wide Atlantic area. I'm sure the debates of your conference will produce stimulating results. Let me conclude then by wishing you a fruitful discussion and a productive meeting. And thank you very much for your attention.